this in the name of this Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Uh, today, as we uh, wanted to share, you know, that we want to enter into the gates of the Lord with saints, even in his court with praise and, and thanks, you know, that everyone and the children of God, you know, praise him and praise him, shout aloud. So we were talking about Josiah, who was the, the youngest of, you know, the king's of uh, Judah, he was very young, eight years old. And then uh, he decides to repair the, the temple. And then he found the scroll and they were reading the word of God. And the, and the, when he heard, you know, the word, he just tear his clothes because he knew there is no jokes about those ones. There is judgment coming. So he was asking, is anyone who know any uh, people from the Lord? He, and they didn't find on the town except one lady. Was, uh, her name is Khulda in Arabic or in Hindi. Khulda maybe in Hindi. And uh, they were uh, asking uh, her about uh, you know, the advice, what the Lord is going to do. But the thing is, uh, she said, you're going to be saved because you tear your clothes. And uh, she didn't see him, but see how people can... The children of God, the prophetic people, will be able to tell things that didn't see. And she said, God going to make this not in your time, but uh, this um, judgment is coming on the people. Judgment is coming. But then he, is, he make the communion. There was like the, the um, uh, Passover was not done from long, long, many, many years. They stopped doing it from time of Joshua, maybe. And the people were so happy in a way they were screaming, you know, and, and singing from joy. So that event of the communion or the Passover or the blood of Jesus, I don't know which language you want to talk. The Jewish seat as the, the Passover, the, the Catholic seat at the communion, the Protestant seat as the blood of Jesus. That's a great joy. That's a big party. That's the biggest of the party. Uh, that's why the church of the old was celebrating the mass. Da, 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 da. They don't want to change. There is time for preaching. But that event of the mass is the story of, you know, oh, a God from the beginning till the end. And uh, the Protestant probably uh, didn't understand that. It's just like the story of human being and God from the beginning and the end. And, uh, of course, the middle of it, which is the part which is celebration of the blood of the Passover. So this is a great ceremony that God is allowing us to do it. We don't know how long, but this is a joy, a great joy. And enjoy it while it lasts. Um, uh, talking about this, you know, um, this coming uh, September the 21st on Tuesday, which is this week coming, is gonna be the Feast of the Tabernacle. So what is the Feast of the Tabernacle? Uh, we Christians do not know, but it's like uh, maybe a seven uh, from Saturday to Saturday. It's a, it's a long feast. They take time uh, off maybe, or it's a time of for them prayer and, and focusing on God things. And the reason is for they make a tent like this. Anyone do tent like they like, small, big, whatever, and they go outside like into the balconies if you don't have a place or whatever, to remind them when they were living uh, into the tent outside for 40 years. And I was reading that word of God about I make them live in a tent and my heart like doing this. God is saying that he could give them any way of, you know, living, but he give them the tent to live mm -hmm. in. So for us here is just remind us that this is Hallelujah. temporary what we're doing what we're living in is just temporary for a while, but then um, into the end of book of uh, Revelation, uh, second last uh, chapter, he say this is the tabernacle of God with men. When we're gonna be united into our God forever and ever. Like I put many pictures before, there was like the cross and the middle was the, the tabernacle of, uh, uh, of God when the Ark of Covenant was in the middle. So they were moving in a form of a cross you know, so here and here, top and bottom, you know, three, 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 three of the, uh, in an order that God decide 
for the 12 tribes of Israel and in the middle was the tabernacle. So that's a big, big feast for them. It's just a few days after the, uh, the Yom Kippur, like you said, Yom Kippur, it means Yom Kafara. Yom Kafara or Yom Kippur is like sound the same word, which means the day of atonement. Uh, when they uh, really fast and, and pray and, and 25 hours prayer and fasting for the whole year for the redemption and for the forgiveness of the sin of the whole nation. And uh, if God, you know, forgive, then this, uh, uh, then the Rosh Hashanah, which is the first year of the year from Rosh Hashanah, Rosh Hashanah, uh, if God accepted at the beginning of the year, the sins of, uh, he removed or he covered by the blood of the sacrifice, uh, the sin of the whole nation for the whole year. How much grateful we are from the blood of Jesus who cover us from top to bottom, from the Amen. beginning of our life till the end, for even year, days and years to come. He is covering us and covering the whole world. Hallelujah. So, uh, Pastor Sam, we're just uh, talking about this coming Tuesday. is called Amen. the Feast of the Tabernacle, if you are aware of it. I really don't know how to celebrate those things. I wanted to get a tent, you know, and put my children, <laughs> my children in it and then have some fun. But I forget on the last moment and uh, next year will be too late. So <laughs> I don't know. But, but just like the feeling, you know, the, this is the best thing, Pastor Sam, you're laughing, but you will see. They love to make a small tent and they sit into it, to the house and enter into it. And in and out, and in and out, yes. they have fun. I see it in Israel. You did? Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I was trying to make it for my, my grandchildren. But <laughs> I may try and offer them to come one hour or so. <laughs> Today, we want to see Jesus, as we uh, discuss, you know. We want to see Jesus. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw him during the time of praise, but uh, our focus here. Yesterday, I had a message. But I didn't know which one of them, whatever, and Pastor Alfie could open the night and make the message change. So you guys talk to him. If Well, listen, guys, uh, it's a little bit critical message. So please don't hate me. But I don't think you are two months or three months into this wilderness or this, you know, uh, um, in prison, whatever you want to call it. But I'm not going to say that. I'm, I'm seeing it as a place where you and the Lord you and him and him and you. Uh, I remember uh, David, if he's still listening to me, um, he was saying something which I didn't understand on the time. He always took things which I don't understand on the time, but later on I got it. Maybe slow understanding. But he was saying that the Lord will reveal himself to people from, for the bad and the, and the good. You know, when we were evangelizing maybe the last time in Mandruot, and I said, oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> he would have show himself to the people, really. And I really didn't celebrate what he was saying in, in, in that time. But apology, David, um, oh. if, if, if this time of your lockdown or being there alone and um, the Lord himself didn't reveal himself to you in a bigger dimension on a closer place, when he going to do it? Uh, you totally have nothing to do, you know. You have good time to think about it. It's not only you, but the whole world. So, uh, uh, you know, as, as much as you want to think like uh, the cruel, what they're doing, but no, I'm taking it, you know, closer, God, closer, nearer. Amen. I want to know you more. Hallelujah. This revelation Hallelujah. that I've never seen. Tell me about things. <laughs> There only with your dear one. Hallelujah. How are we going to get a time like this where really, really you are, uh, except you and your Bible or you in your music, if you play, whatever, and uh, not much to do, not much with you know, responsibility. So if you didn't seek the Lord, uh, David warned you, and Alison, now David, Alison, he warned you on that day that the Lord will be revealing himself to people. And uh, I'm just very uh, grateful. You know, we put a channel of beat shoot that many people hit like 50 on, never had 50 hit. If I have two or three, I'll be very grateful for my videos. 
So people, and, and I put the video after a few hours, many hits, they wanted to listen. And if you make it um, like title, which is a bit attractive and a bit dark for them, they probably hit for it to see what is there, but then they're gonna meet the master. So our moments together and uh, our time into enjoy it. I want you to really enjoy it because when they're gonna finish this uh, uh, lockdown, we're gonna be facing another dimension which is not gonna be very pleasant to the children of God. It was being told into the Bible and it's no, no uh, mistake about it. Um, I, I just don't know where to start with. But do you want me to prove from you from the Bible that, um, you know, there is many level of revelation and I don't know which place of revelation you're standing in and which place of revelation you want to have. It's of course up to you to decide which level you wanna go because God will not give you, you're probably doing the same thing that you do always read the same time, same amount or whatever, or you're coming and hitting on a place say, no, no. I've never had a holiday or time like that in my life. And I wanna take that opportunity to be equipped in, in, in every aspect. If I'm gonna go out and preach again, my preaching will not be the same. If I wanna pray for a sick, my prayer will not be the same. If I have to walk my, uh, uh, in boldness, my boldness will not be the same. I'm gonna be changed during that time. You know, you're locked with God. Imagine though 40 days that uh, Moses was on the top of the mountain with God. You had more than the, those 40 days. So don't be upset with them, in, but enjoy it. They're gonna unlock us if we enjoy it. So here is different level of revelation and you decide which way. But I've seen like we really have a lot of vision and, and lot of, uh, sorry, a lot of dreams these days. You know, I don't know about you guys, but day after day, there is a dream uh, and, and it's more, it's a prophetic dream. It's not just like, yeah, you've been really eating a big meal before you sleep and then you have a dream or scary movie and you have them on your dream. No, they're very prophetic. And, and the, the, the revelation that God is giving you is beyond, it's, it's for the end time people because he promised in the book yeah. of Act and in Joel right. too, and all of, of, of you guys are aware of this into the end time, he poured my spirit on all flesh. The people will prophesy and they will uh, uh, speak uh, the word of God, men and women, slave and free. All of you are very familiar with, with this piece of the scripture. Not saying that we are in time, the one in time start from time of Peter as he declared it. But what I'm saying here is, um, what do you do with those dreams? What do you want to do with, do you wanna go for more things that you never did before? Are you satisfied for the revel at your act? Um, let me quit this and see where we are. Um, I just can give you some uh, description, uh, but I don't know if you're gonna hate me after that, please don't. Uh, because what I'm gonna share, it's a bit strange for all of us, me included. I desire it. You, I know that something is happening, but sometimes because preacher don't preach about it, that we don't understand it and we do not know. But I'm believing that many of us, and I just describe those things so maybe it relates to you and you understand. Yeah, this is happening to me. You just come suddenly, someone awake you from sleep or whatever, and you feel like, why, why? And you come like you're coming from another place or another planet or whatever, you know. And, and, and sometimes you awaken and the dream is very vivid, very colorful, very detailed. And sometimes it's foggy and hazy and you see only the last part. So that part of your, uh, between your sleep and, and awakening, it's, it's very, very important. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe we're not you really- uh, What do you see? Sorry? Yeah. Sorry? Pastor Sam? Oh, no, no, I'm just reading the, your, your, the scripture reading. Sorry, sorry to disturb you. Uh, yeah, well, it's a it's, it's lot of things, but maybe not going through all those things. It's just like um, the Lord going to show us a lot of things the time coming. He's going to show you a lot of things, and he want to train us how to see and what we see. Um, and, and it's up to us because 
in the Orthodox Church. I don't know about other churches. I don't know about the Catholic Church. I don't know about the Protestant. There is translation. People can come from one place to another into the spirit realm and they, God is using them into things. Uh, and this is when they reach a level of spirituality, whatever, then uh, they are monks or uh, bishops or whatever, they go from one place. And this is kind of sign of sanctity. But I just don't find that in the word of God, you know, that translation and going from one place to another. But I believe that the children of God, you know, uh, especially, and um, have one part here for people who are love evangelism, when you are really loving, Evangelism, you can fall asleep and start to dream that you are evangelizing in Africa, preaching in, in South America, uh, going in Philippines and, and have a mic and preach and say, what is this, you know? Is this like me making those ideas to my head? Is this like the desire of my heart? What is it, Lord? Talk to me. Maybe I will have a chance in lifetime to do all those desires maybe I want. Please don't hate me when I say this. You already preach in those places. So already into your night time, the Lord took you to those places and you preached and you didn't know. Because no one will desire to do this. No one will um, dream of dreaming. You know, say what well, the word dream is just something I like to happen sometimes, the word itself. Uh, but the, the Lord is taking the children of God. And most of the time we awake and you feel like you're so fed inside. As if you really, really read a good word of God and it's filling your heart. And filling your soul and, and enriching you, right? But you don't remember. Part of this is just go and psh, it's fog. So it's up to you to take those moments as serious as you want and talk to God about it, you know, before you go to sleep. It's not like the ritual that you read every night, you know, in the name of the Father, Son, and you pray your prayer and you go for it again and again or from a book or whatever. Just talk to him about what you want him to happen to you in the night time. Because in the night time, the Lord can use you into a bigger measure or even in the daytime. But I mean, like you're a spiritual being and you're under the hand of God and he can do with you and through you things that you cannot even uh, imagine. Today we were um, singing about, uh, um, I want to see Jesus. I've seen, G I see Jesus in the glory. I so we, our desire is to see him. The, the Lord will come and visit you if you desire that. He put an application and say, I want to see you, he will come. He will come in your dream, he will come in a trance, he will come in a form or another, so you will be able to see him. And I don't want you to think that you are locked down or your hand tight or, you know, they put you in a chain. You're more free now because you're closer to God than ever. And you can do things that no one can see. Like you can, you know, this topic is not really taught, you know, I try to find, uh, uh, some people to talk Amen. about it so I can, um, you know, put something Amen. like really uh, Thank you, known and it's not only me when I feel or talk about those things, Hallelujah. but really it's not much into the, the things talking about this topic. It's not much. Uh, and, and the reason is are the new age people, they make us scared. They make us scared. You know, when you see the rainbow, talk to the rainbow, you're not very Ooh, thrill. That's the covenant that the Lord will never flood the earth one more time. But we lost that thrill because what is happening and it's now is not symbolic of something good. So the same thing is um, he is using uh, this uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it when they move? What is it? Yes. Uh, outside the body, what, you know, the new age people when they do this and witches and and, and, and make us, you know, like really uh, afraid of all those experiences. But let me surprise you guys. We do have in Egypt monk, monks, you know, that kind of the, the I show you the other last week uh, from the Catholic church, those four monks, this is full of the desert of Egypt. I don't know, they like this. You could be a doctor degree, you have a doctor or a pharmacist or a scientist or engineer, whatever, and you leave the whole world and go into that monk, into the desert as a young man or 
uh, there is, of course, for the nuns, but not much as men. And you just give yourself to that place and you work your, you know, for your, uh, um, like the ground to get you the food and, and they work with their hands. They have activities because they have no supply and people come and uh, they find the peace. They travel mm. to go in the middle of the desert mm. to give money and to, uh, to feel the peace and, and, and seek God or attend the mass or whatever. Hallelujah. And they're not really a great preacher. They don't take mic and preach. It's like, you know, the Catholic and the Orthodox Church, the same style of quiet mass, and that's all what they can uh, really give to people. But what happened here, those people are not crazy. They didn't love, uh, left their life. You know, many of them having degrees, they can be really very rich. Doctors, many of the doctors. You do not know how much time and effort and money can cost you to train a doctor. And then he threw this. You know, the Pope of Egypt is a pharmacist. They threw all this, you know, and they go for this desert place. But here is according to, you know, what I used to hear, you know, they come closer to God in a way they can go and travel and do things for the Lord and the spirit realm in their prison or in their uh, monastery. So whatever word you want to say, that they have no freedom to do what they want. But they have freedom in the spirit to do things for God beyond description and healing and da 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 in a way like you you want to believe it or you want to be a bit skeptical I don't really uh, care what you think about it but that topic you know I was unable to speak about it because I don't want people to think we are uh, you know um, talking about new age thing but why are we gonna talk about it you have all those ability and you're sitting home miserable thinking, yeah, I have a dream in life which I never achieved. I'm getting older now. I cannot do this or I cannot go there, whatever. You can go tonight. So I don't know where I'm going to start. Um, but let me read that for you. Um, I remember the time when I met Christ in the beginning, uh, you know, when I received the Holy Spirit. I was with, with the Lord long uh, life ago, but uh, when I got the, the gift of the Holy Spirit was a lady a family that uh, we met and she lay hand on people, God give her the gift, laying hand people get the gift of the Holy Spirit. So she prayed for me the first time and was just like, no tongues, no nothing, you know, what she expects second time, third time. But then the Lord show up and, and there was a, a big hallelujah. But first time I saw a door, but I don't wanna tell her. I don't want her to go and, and, and play crazy because I was a very skeptical person. So I was just seeing like a door in front of me and I was just clouds. And the second time, you know, second time it means another session after a few days and, oh, and she, she tried to put all her face for me, you know, and I was just like, you're not gonna open my mouth. There is no way. I'm not gonna do these crazy things. No, not me. But again, I saw that door open again, and that door was light this time. And I didn't understand, but again, I didn't want to tell her because I don't want her to celebrate something. I want something neat, something real. So this door here is reminding me. And after this, I looked, behold, a door standing open. This is from Revelation 4. This is where the apostle John wrote, wrote the, the revelation that we all of us reading from it till now. And the first voice, which I have heard speaking to me like a trumpet say, come up here and I will show you what must take place after this. You know, uh, uh, I just have many slides, but I, I want you to enjoy whatever the Lord wants us to have. So here it was a door, there was a door in heaven which I saw was cloud maybe, and after the cloud I was closer, the second time was a light, but it was a door in heaven, which I didn't understand. Till maybe, you know, not, not long ago, I start to understand there was a door of heaven when I was with the Sudanese people. And then one of them came and he strong, uh, changed from Islam to, and, and he said that the first time he saw there was a door, I thought, oh, that's not coincidence, no. You see a door, that's the door that I saw when I came to the Lord, the real way, that door. That door was a door of heaven. 
And here the apostles say, standing an open door in heaven. I say, the voice say, come up here. The voice was like a trumpet, you know? Come up here and I show you what must take place after this. How many of us wanted to know what should make, uh, um, show you what must take place after this? How many of us want that? Do you want to have to know what must take place after this? Because this is here, all of us waiting for things to happen and, and we do not know what they're gonna do with us. But here is the beauty at once. I was in the spirit, boom. And he was, and behold, his throne stood in heaven and is one, uh, with one seated on the throne. Instantly it was translated to heaven. And this type of translation, it's, so it's here for you, Pastor Sam, this one. An example of this man is Canadian mm. uh, and he was translated to Mexico. I don't know if you can see it. Uh, I just found that in the internet. So that's not my revelation. It's just something which encouraged me. He, he had the vision or the, the translation in the natural. So wow. there is translation that people can be translated physically like Phillips in, the, in yeah. Act 8 yeah. or translating in the spirit. So Amen. I found that for Pastor Sam and I said, I'm going to take it for him. Hallelujah. Um, yeah, he, he was Canadian and he was translated to Mexico to preach the gospel of the remote, remote village. Those who are active in evangelism may find themselves having literal, literal, it means really happen, Amen. realistic dreams of ministering to the lost and sharing the gospel with them. I didn't try that. If you like it, you take it. If you don't, uh, uh, skeptically you drop it. I receive so, it. So, yeah. So, if you are faithful to do this during the day, and it is not uncommon for God to extend that for you into the night. So, if you think, you know, you go on Saturday and preach the gospel or Sunday or Friday, you know, outside, and you really, your heart for this, God can make you use more effective than you think. So, they cannot lock us. No. They can't because the power of evangelism in, in when you're a spirit being going, you know, under the, you know, uh, I'm going to get uh, that uh, act. Let me find it for you. I hope it's the next one. No, it's not the next one. So maybe the, uh, yeah, see that one. See that one pastor saying. Yes. And when this is the apostle Philip, Philip, Philip he was translated in the physical form. Mm. It's not in his mind. It's not in the dream. It was physical. physical. Some of us can be translated in the spirit realm and they can do things exactly. Amen. You know, they come and I say, oh, these saints or this whatever into the Orthodox Church, they, they believe in it. So they see more, more of it than other uh, saints, whatever. They came in my dream and healed me. And, and they, uh, they see healing whatever into that sense. So there was a translation in the spirit realm because that person didn't come physically. There is a physical translation that is. Uh, yeah. So here is a physical one. And when uh, in, in Act 8, when, when they were come up to, that's with the Enoch, you know, the guy who was walking in the deserts and Philip was joining him and the, you know all you, all you guys the story. Do you know it, Emisha? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, and when they were come up to the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. <laughs> he took him away. Hallelujah. And that Enoch saw him no more. Hallelujah. And he went on his way rejoicing. But see what happened now for Philip. Because you are, do you think you wanted to work to, to serve me? And someone can tie your hands. You could be really in uh, like Paul. He wrote for the whole world from a prison guy, a real prison. Yeah. yeah. And his mat material is life for all of us till the day. But Philip was found in Azotos. Uh, in the Arabic, it's uh, Ashdod. So I don't know how is this can be Ashdod. I don't know. And passing through here, uh, listen to this. He preached in all the cities till he came to Caesarea. So those translation or this form of, uh, you know, um, supernatural um, experience with the Lord, fill you with the power, you know, he was going and evangelizing in every city until he went to Caesarea. That's awesome. So 
So gonna take a few examples quickly for this, you know, without losing your time. Jesus here in John 6 was translated from uh, one side to another side, you know, they, they left, they said, you go and I will come. And, and if you read the story, it's only John who is describing it because John wanted to show the part of the diet. Uh, Jesus is a Lord, is God uh, more than others. So you found like he was trying really to show in his story that Jesus went after the multiplication of the food he crossed and came on the water and there was no, um, there was a translation in a physical form. Uh, Ezekiel. Yeah, I, I really don't want to make it too long for you, but um, there is two examples or three examples on the Old Testament. It's the King 18 uh, and, and Second King uh, 2. These are talking about the two prophets, uh, Elijah and Elisha. And the Lord your God lives in uh, First King 18. No nation, so there kingdom. is no nation or kingdom, whether my Lord has not sent to seek you. Uh, after Elijah, you know, uh, closed the heaven, I was sharing the story with my kids yesterday, my grandkids. Uh, he locked the heaven and they were searching for him. Come and lock the heaven. We want water. They couldn't find him in any nation. And, and another uh, one they said, and the spirit of the Lord shall carry you whether I know or not. So that uh, uh, guy coming from the king, he said, don't go please anywhere. The king will kill me because I know that the spirit of the Lord will take you. So this was a, 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 a thing known to the people of God on that time. Their men who serving the king is not really as religious as you know the people of the church. But with these things, it's not known to us because of the, uh, what they call it in... Uh, when they travel, you know, those new age experience, I, don't, I, I forget the word. Um, I'm traveler? Uh, it, it has another word. Well, I will find it, but don't worry astral about it. Projection. Astral projection, bravo. That astral projection, even witches use it and, and that they can do harm and all that. And because they jump into this, they know the things of God and they're using it more than the children of God. How silly and how dumb is this? But see, here is the man, go and read that story in King 18. You know, he was searching for him and he said, please don't go, you're gonna kill me. Don't go anywhere. Uh, and, and here he said, and, I, and it shall come to pass as soon as I'm gone from here, then the spirit of the Lord shall carry you whether I know not in a place where I do not know. And then Achab will come and he will harm me. So there was something like really known on that time that we were not aware of, that the children of God can be translated even from one place to another. In Second King, uh, it say, and the spirit of the Lord has taken him up and cast him upon some mountain or in some valley. It's the same story, people are translated. Uh, of course, Ezekiel is the, the best one into those uh, uh, experience. You have eight Ezekiel, eight Ezekiel forty, and um, yeah, it was saying, uh, look at those things because this is very scary. He put out in the form of a hand and took me by the lock of my head, <laughs> like this. Lock of my head. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Let me show you. I have it. Vision of God. He took him from the head like this. Huh? <laughs> Yeah, they took me by a, a lock of my head. Yeah, a lock of my head, and the spirit lift me up between earth and heaven. <laughs> <laughs> and brought me in the vision of God to Jerusalem. To Jerusalem, <laughs> Alfie. Yeah. <laughs> he went to Jerusalem. In Ezekiel 40, it's saying the hand of the Lord was upon me. Now we know the hand of the Lord is eight, uh, Ezekiel 8, this is Ezekiel 40. He had a lot of those, uh, you know, occasion with the Lord. The land of the Lord was upon me and he brought me to the city. He took him to another place. In visions of God, he brought me to the land of Israel and set me down in a very high mountain. Thank you, Jesus. And, and uh, the structure looked like the city to the south. Jesus. He took him to another place. So Elijah and Elisha, uh, they have that supernatural transposition. You remember, Elijah didn't want to leave Elijah. So I'm going to leave you and going to run, you know, quickly, God take you somewhere. And after he 
was translated to heaven in a real, never returned back. And the spirit came upon Elisha and he knew that it was done and he's not returning. The other, uh, you know, they were searching to find Elisha body somewhere in, in, a, in another mountain, whatever, because that trend was more common. Children of God having that concept and they knew it. How about us? How ignorant. We're not even able to prophesy and speak word that is a bit daring, whatever. The king, second king, he said, Elisha, that's the second one, said to him, did not my spirit go with you when the man turned from his chariot to meet you? Uh, if you not know that story, it's a guy, uh, Gehazi, who was his, his uh, he took yes. the money from, from uh, Noaman Esturiani, who has, was yeah. leper. And he said, did, did not my spirit go with you? So the spirit here of Elisha was going with his servant Mm. When he ran after the, yes. uh, the Assyrian who came for healing and he asked him for, for garment and vineyard and sheep and oxen. See, these things are in the word of God. Amen. Somehow, because no one dare to touch because of those experiences, we don't want to go crazy into this. But we are in the time of this is something that you should be aware of and you should be really unlocked yourself and say, Lord, oh, you yeah. know, that, that time of my uh, existing, you know, this, we still have a month or more or less, who knows, use this month to do things for you that I never did before. Um, so what he's saying here, uh, we, in, a, in the New Testament, of course, we have Jesus, we have Philip, and we have Apostle Paul who was caught into the third heaven. He said, whether in the body or outside the body, and we feel like our oh, apostle Paul was special. No one is special. No one. Everyone is allowed or invited to the table of the Lord. How much you want to eat from it, it's up to you. And in Colossians, oh, says, so I am thought I am absent in the body, yet I am with you in the spirit. How can I be with the spirit? Is this like a virtual world or real? Those people don't lie. So um, these are here a um, few examples of people who can really um, be translated physically or in the spirit. He was not with them in the physical form, the Apostle Paul, but he was with them in the spirit. And Elisha, not Elijah, the second one, he was able to be with his servant when he was asking for you know, uh, uh, reward after the healing of the leper, uh, that very high uh, rank man of Assyria, his spirit was with him, was not physical form. But see here, uh, that's something um, I, I found that which is interesting. Uh, new evils are burst and uh, the multiplication of darkness and poles are represented by the great whore of Babylon statue. That's not my words, but I mean like into the time uh, coming or starting now, there is new evil uh, burst in earth or delivered in earth. Uh, there is no way. Uh, angels don't multiply, but I mean like there is more release of evil things uh, and multiplication of darkness more. So children of God cannot be stationary in the level they are in. Um, they are into a place where uh, they really have to hit into places because um, the darkness thicker and we so ignorant so gullible so pure so unknowing so sleepy, uh, sleepy I don't know give them the adjective you want but I don't think this is something very good so we can be translated to heaven you can be translated um, uh, that is ah, this word astral projection you said the dreams and all that so we want to so those are examples from the Bible. So I'm not talking to you about uh, things which are not, um, things are real. Now we're gonna uh, get the training maybe in an easy way again from the word of God, because this is all, I don't talk experience. And even the experience is good because they say they're overcome by the word of their, uh, by the word of God and the word of their testimony. 
So my testimony is valid, but I don't take it as based because this is my uh, experience. But the, the word of God is experience for everyone. Their weakness, their challenge, their success is for you and me. It's similar. Amen. How can we start into this? And how can we do it the right way, not the wrong way? Um, I find it very interesting uh, that the Lord entrusts you on something that you see. And he come, to the, he come for uh, free people into the Old Testament and say, what do you see? And what they see in front of them is just the thing. Very interesting. You have the, the, the things, go and read them. So he came first to Jeremiah, he came to Amos, and then came to Zechariah. These three people, then, and the Lord of God, you know, uh, and I'm going to say, uh, we're going to go and to see, what do you see? Because this is really the, the main thing. What do you see? This is how you get trained into seeing things that you never... So that's the training. So the first of all, something happened. And after that, the Lord is us. So you see that word in red. What do you see? It's repeated into uh, Jeremiah 4, 1, 4 in the beginning, the first chapter of Jeremiah. And what was he saying? Moreover, the word of God. So something always should happen. Then he asks you that question, what do you see? And we're going to go into this part again. He say, I see a rod and an almond tree. What is a rod? What's an almond tree? What's the value of this vision? But this is all what he can see. What do you see? Then said the Lord unto me, thou ha ha you have well seen. Bravo. That's exactly what I want you to see. For I will hasten my word to perform it. I'll make it faster. And uh, the word of the Lord came unto me the second time saying, what do you see? So another thing, so all what he saw, and God said, bravo, my, my boy, you're my boy, you're my man. He saw a rod and he see almond tree. What is the rod? What's the almond tree? Of course, we can see that the rod is dead. The almond tree, it's life in it. But anyway, uh, what do you see the second time? He say, I see a seething pot and the face of there, thereof is towards the north. Then the Lord said unto him. So now he's, he is... Um, declaring or uh, make him understand the vision. So the beginning, like you get your child, you know, like you give him this and he start, oh, this is ice cream. I like it. A baby, you know, and the second time, third time he come and, 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 and grab it from your hand and he wants it. You know, that thing is an ice cream and it tastes good. So the same thing here, you know, he starts to grow in God. What do you see? Just see a rod, just I see um, an almond tree. Now, this time he saw something more uh, stronger, like Idra Manfuha's bowl is full uh, pot, see things pot, and it's full. And then said, this, uh, then the Lord uh, said unto you, out of the north, an evil shall break force upon all the inhabitants of the land. So this is part that we want to reach into by the end of this lockdown. You start by seeing a rod, you start by seeing uh, um, almond tree, very basic, simple visions. But after then, you can understand God. And he's telling you, out of the north, and if, uh, uh, Alfie, you missed this part. In the beginning, you know, God is showing him, what do you see? He was seeing a stick, he was seeing uh, a rod and an almond tree. Then the second time, God said to him, what do you see? He said, I'm a seizing spot. And he said, and now he know more. So God is training him into the, the program of seeing. And you know, Jeremiah is one of the big seers of the old ages. Big seer. So that's chapter one. So how God go with him one by one to make him the seer of all ages. And all of us know the book of Lamentation. He warned them and warned them until there was no way for them to be changing. And he started to weep and cry. Things is happening, guys. You don't want to get warned. Then let me cry for what I'm gonna. I am seeing gonna happen to you. So we're starting by. What do you see? I see a rod. I see a, an almond tree. And then he said, "Out of the north, an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land." That's what we wanted to be able to achieve into that, uh, you know, future days or months or whatever. 
Uh, we go into another uh, version of, but um, yeah, Amos, Amos, he said, uh, and the Lord showed me, and he said to him in Amos 7, 8, do I have it in English? No, sorry, uh, it was the message all written in the morning. What are you seeing, Amos? And in, in this, uh, in, and the Lord said, Ziga, and then say, um, and he said, I'm not gonna forget my people, forgive them. No, no, in the first time he was seeing Garad, which are locusts. All we see is just locusts. Whatever God is showing you, trust that that's the, the, the it's not your imagination, it's the Lord. Because in the beginning, you come with that heart, show me, Lord. Train me as you train Jeremiah and Amos and Zechariah. Train Amen. me. Amen. I am your seer. I am yes. your prophet. I am the one for Amen. translation. Amen. I want to preach the whole world. Amen. I am Amen. yours. Amen. I'm ready. Amen. I don't care about the cost or whatever. Just use me, Lord. Amen. Use me. I'm not satisfied by the amount of work that I did for you. Yes. I'm not sure that I really give you back the love that you did for me on the cross or whatever. Just as you set your heart into that direction, you make sure that the end time children of God will exceed everyone into, uh, you know, uh, into the past. Maybe you will not be like the one who wrote the Bible, but um, but we will not be less than them into our lifetime using it in a, in a miraculous and powerful way. Now we see into um, uh, the other one is Zechariah. And, and he's, can you open it quickly, Alfie, and read it for us, Amos? Seven, one and two. And read it loud so the people can see it. Amos seven, one, two. Yeah. And Misha, you read eight. Eight, one and two again. Yeah. The Lord made me see this. And behold, he is forming locusts at the beginning of the coming up of the late grass. Even behold, the late grass after the king's mowings. And it happened when it had made an end of eating the tender part of the land. Then I said, O Lord, forgive, I pray you. How can Jacob stand? For he is small. So he's interceding for the Lord that uh, Jacob is small. Do, do, don't look at his sin, Lord. Please forgive him. It's kind of uh, Abraham into the way he's approaching. Read the verse 8, please, Alfie. Verse 8? Yeah. And Jehovah said to me, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a plumb line. Then the Lord said, behold, What's I will a set... a plumb line? Yeah, keep, keep reading. Behold, I will set a plumb line in the midst of my people Israel. I will not again pass by them anymore. He will not forgive them. So read for us Amos 8, 1 and 2, Misha, please. The Lord Jehovah made me see this, and behold, a basket of summer fruit. And he said, Amos, what do you see? And I said, a basket of summer fruit. Then Jehovah said to me, the end has come to my people Israel. I will never pass by them anymore. I will not pass that by them anymore. So why he was seeing how the message come from a basket of fruit and, oh. and the interpretation, I will uh, not see them. Uh, I will not uh, pass them anymore. But it's all about what do you see? As long as you are uh, faithful with the Lord, he's training you. We go now in Zechariah and it's again in, Eng in Arabic, sorry. Um, can you open Zechariah 5, 1, 2, and 3? Sorry. Uh, and Misha read uh, uh, Zechariah 5, and Alfie read Zechariah 4. It's two, again, uh, same things of people seeing things. Read 4, yeah. Alfie, 4, 1, 2, 3. And the angel that talked with me came again and awakened me as a man that is awakened out of his sleep. And he said unto me, what do you see? And I said, I see and behold a lampstand 
all of it gold and a bowl on its top and its seven lamps on it and seven pipes to the seven lamps on its top and two olive trees be beside it, one on the right of the bowl and the other on the left of it. And I <laughs> asked, oh, sorry. And Misha, so what is happening here? He's, he said to him, what do you see? In Zechariah 5, uh, Misha, please. One. Yeah. I have it in English. And again, I lifted up my eyes and looked and behold a flying scroll. And he said to me, what do you see? And I answered, I see a flying scroll. Its length is 20 cubits, its width 10 cubits. And he said to me, this is the curse that goes forth over the face of the whole earth. The curse was coming upon the whole earth. How would you like to see something like this? No. <laughs> and if it's coming and the people of God don't see it, how bad going to be that? We were all, you know, I remember the day when they started the lockdown here. I was in my clinic and it was a normal day, you know, and, and, and an old guy, which is from Ireland, Islander, a friend of the, the clinic, he come and I say, oh, and he sit there and he talk and whatever. And I said, why do you have this on you? Because we were free. We never had this as an oblique. And the second day, we were in the lockdown. So how do you want that this curse was coming upon the whole earth and we are sitting, I am a, a daughter of God. And I say, why do you have this? Why? I didn't know. I should be knowing because God never do anything without telling his people. And I was criticizing that I'm he's diabetic and I'm afraid and you know, Susie. And I said, okay, okay, fine. And the second day we have to, all of us, been obliged to do it and to put it and all that. How can this happen without us knowing? So now I'm going to go for this passage of the scripture again and show you what is happening. Because we're not here, you want to fall under the, the wow of this awesome people of God, Jeremiah, Amos, and Zechariah. Big names. Their name into the book of, uh, uh, of the Lord. The big prophecy coming from them. But see what happened to them and how they didn't uh, notice it. Into the Jeremiah one, he said, the word of the Lord came to me. So this is how it comes. So you were reading maybe in the Bible, whatever, and the word of the Lord come to you. This is one way. Uh, in, um, and, and then again, yeah, uh, where is the second time? And the word of the Lord came to me the second time. So he was just reading the word and the word of God come to him. Like you and I, and this is probably the only way that we uh, can get revelation. But we don't trust the other way. But here is Amos from the beginning. Uh, the, the first word he said, Hakeza Arani said, This is what the Lord showed me. We had a vision. And he said, What do you see? And God is training him to be a bigger seer. Right? What do you see? So God is ready to start with us in any level and train us to be better. So and then, and then the second time, what did he say? Um, and then he said, I'm young and whatever. And then God declared that he's not going to forgive them and all that. Um, and then, so the two ways that Amos 7, that Alfie read, this is what the Lord showed me. Uh, in Zechariah, he said, the word of the Lord came to me. See, it's a different way of approaching the Lord to his children. Can you see the difference? I'm sorry it's in, 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 in the Arabic. I'm very sorry. But the first time the word of God came to him, the other time the Lord showed him something. What do you see? I just see this, a rod. I see uh, whatever God is showing you. And then come to Zechariah. Uh, do you want to look for us, Alfie, in English? And Misha, you, the passage of the, the scripture, the beginning of it. This time is different. Zechariah 4. One, Alfie and Zechariah five. One, Misha, read what you read because it's a different. Yeah, and the angel that talked with me came again and awakened me as a man that is awakened out of his sleep. So he was sleeping. Say sleeping, he was sleeping. Sleeping. It was in his dream. And the angel came and spoke to him. The first time, 
Jeremiah received the word of the Lord. The Lord was talking to him. And Jeremiah was a kid. And I said, go to someone else. I'm a kid, Lord, you know, and the same thing, Amos. I'm too, Israel, he said, Israel is too young. And that was, was um, uh, the tree, what we call it, uh, the fig tree, the, the, the gemez, it's not fig, it's another fruit. But anyway, these people are simple people that the Lord approached them into talk. And, and what is in, Eli, uh, in Zechariah 5, Misha? Um, then the angel who talked with me went forth and said to me, now lift up your eyes and see what this is that goes forth. Lift up your eyes and looked and behold a flying run. So this is approaches that all what is happening here among the people of God. Uh, and he declared to him the, the curse was going to come upon all the earth. No one was going to reverse this curse. Big, big uh, destiny. Not for a nation, not for your culture, for your country, for your people, but for the whole earth. And they just see what you see. What are you seeing? Someone read it in the world, the other one in a dream, the other one was just to look up and see. Very, very, very strange. And I was just reading this and I say, Lord, how can I tell people that? Um, so here is this part is not my uh, revelation, guys. I just got it from a man who's writing it in the internet, God uh, bless him, whatever. This is type of things that we can see. Um, uh, he say imagination, mind's eye impression. You know, like I, I don't know what happened to me recently. I'm just like there and I see a face of people which I don't know, a man or whatever and doing whatever. And I said, no, 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 I don't wanna have that. You know, you're scared, you don't wanna be schizophrenic and seeing things or hearing things. And I rejected and a few times another picture of people and I was awake. My, and people of intercession, they say, oh, these people, God wants you to intercede for them. All right, I am not really into the business of intercession much, but uh, on that moment, I, I was a bit like rejecting it. No, no, no. And another face, people, whatever. And, and, and I remember like God, give me dreams, dreams, you know, like really. I remember that dream of this guy. I met him in Egypt, you know, having this. And he was going down. I was going up. And we met. He looked at me as a come and help us. And you never forget those things because God is telling you into the message. What you have instantly to ask God to show you the meaning of the dream. Not all oh, leave it for tomorrow. That's very important. That revelation can change your life, can save your family, can save your whole world. He told them about the destruction yet to come. So don't despise those things. Treat them as very important, precious moments with the Lord. And because you're very busy in life and whatever, you don't quieten yourself enough to listen to the Lord. So he come like we shared that Bible verse in Job many times that twice and thrice the Lord opened the high ears of people and speak to them. So you can have yeah. And, and, and I believe, I really believe that the children of God who are tuned to him right now, you see a lot of things into your head or in voices or whatever that you are not familiar with. Um, and the guy here was say, writing this, he say, be careful, you don't go for a visitation to heaven. They, uh, it's the Holy Spirit who took you and, and look after you and whatever and don't be, uh, you know, those people who go to, to hell and they are, Look, you know, see horrible things and they come and they're very crazy about evangelism because they taste the taste and they saw with their eyes. You don't have to go for that. But I mean, like, whatever God wants you to, you know, before you go to sleep, I said, Lord, I serve you in the morning and I pray that my uh, things that I did today is pleasing to you. My sleep time is eight hours. That pressure, this part of my life, Lord, use this part for your glory use it the way you like protect me holy spirit yeah. and bring me back you know the jewish people believe that when you go to sleep uh, he awake me every morning you know that uh, uh saying of david mm. they believe that we die and every morning god give uh, awaken us to 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 life amen as christian we don't believe that that way but it's written mm. into the word of god from david himself they mm. have that as a strong word so every morning you bless the Lord because he awake you. He give another chance of life for Amen. you. 
you know so for them that so you i don't know what are you uh, seeing or what is happening in your life but if you're tuned to god or if your heart is tuned and you wanted to have something more powerful more effective than anything you did in the past they cannot lock the children of god they lock their uh, uh, apostle paul and probably this was one of the big mistakes they did in their life apart from putting jesus on the cross he wrote words which worked for 2000 years that's a big mistake they did you know they shouldn't lock him because uh, he wouldn't write the letters he would visit people change their life and that's it uh, no one will know much about what happened except stories, but he wrote with his hand and the word of God was written in a format which can stay for, you know, forever and ever. So don't find, you know, you can have a clear mind eye, mind's eye. Your eyes are closed or open and suddenly in the minds of your eye, you see something happening. Or you may say, see a vague image or may you see a clear image. I don't know what you, or maybe you're sleeping there and just have a trance and uh, and the Lord will show you, you know, thing. Uh, I had that beautiful trance, you know, back in New Zealand and my husband was going for a big, big surgery, life and death situation. And uh, and I was there visiting him before the surgery and I, I was tired after university for eight hours or whatever and just went like that. And I went into the trance and I've seen Jesus. And, and he said, don't worry, he's with me. And I said, yeah, yeah, I have to go now to the, my children. And I left him. But Jesus from that trance took to him before his surgery. You don't despise those things because they are life changing and life preserving and a warning. And uh, because we are not taught about them or we don't put attention into them or you think Someone is better than me, is more qualified. Oh, he's the pastor of the church. He's the prophet of the church. Uh, he, they call her prophetess. They call him the prophet, the seer. And, and you put yourself into those, but it's not for me. I'm just simple, uh, you know, things. And, and, and the, the, the word of God is for those simple people. So if you categorize yourself as a simple, then this uh, advantage of the word of God is for you. Twilight light. I don't know what's twilight uh, trance, but you are sleeping. Oh, yeah. and, hmm? What is it? Early morning. Mm -hmm. The early morning, Pastor Sam, is the best time I have. Yeah. I receive my messages between, you know, going in the early morning, still sleep, still uh, awake. And I just da, da 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 You know when you open the computer and you download da, 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 all the things which were that, and you download all those things to me. You know, like really. So I continue to continue into that mode of whatever. I'm not really trying to wake myself or shake myself to be uh, quickly going whatever, and, and and into that time of that between the the awakening and that's the best time. The Lord is downloading into your mind and your heart things that you can imagine. Most of the preaching, he give me this, pick this, not this, because I charge all the time. But which one of all this is the word for your children, Lord? And which one is not? So that's why I like that Pastor Sam said, dream when you're sleeping, the lucid dream, which are vivid and, and, and clear that you can, um, um, real or hyper real dream, while sleep accompanied by some level of ability to control your action. I don't know if that's uh, possible or not, but uh, I know that I can go to sleep again and, and continue in the dream once and twice. And this is really more confirmation that the Lord into is into this dream. Um, night visions, uh, vision, mm -hmm. eye closed or eye open visitations. Uh, vegetation, vegetation of angels and uh, I'm just a little bit uh, um, Holy Spirit girl, you know. I don't know about the visitation of angels, whatever. They're probably wonderful uh, creature, but uh, I'm used to the Holy Spirit and he's more than enough for me. So I don't know people. Uh, and of course, the demons who can come to the dreams. We cannot ignore that part. So if you don't want the angel to visit you, uh, 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 demons will visit you, which are type of angels, but the bad ones. And, and you have to know what to do with this in the dream. 
because if it's warning for you, then you have to be really aware. If it's for you to break the curse or rebuke, you know, no, you're not going to do that to my family or to my friend or to me. Why? No. And instantly, if it's a sexual dream, no, you can abort it. These are sexual uh, sins that they did uh, um, damage humanity a lot. But don't take the dreams or this moment of your night uh, time because it's very, very valuable, you know? Like really, if you watch the movies, they did a lot of study about this and they give people, like they keep them in drugs so they keep dreaming and dreaming and I don't know. The world around us understand more than the children of God about those things. But I'm going to tell you this, which I said many times. I received in my, when I was doing my uh, final exam in, in uh, ophthalmology, I received the exam in the night time. And my husband is witness. In the morning, I said, da, 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 the questions. So the Lord was able to tell me in details the questions of the exam. And uh, this is something, it's not uh, uh, a little thing. It's not small. Mm -hmm. It's a big Mm. things that you get an exam on your phone and that way mm. and uh, i don't want to lose the time to tell the story but it's interesting orbs i don't know uh, living colors translation rapture this is you know the and translocation that's what we talk, talk about it that you be translated physically by your uh, whole body like philip was translated jesus was translated uh, uh, or being translated in the spirit, only like Apostle Paul and uh, and uh, who else? Uh, Elisha, not Elijah. Uh, sound of the spirit, audible voice. I do not know about that audible voice. Uh, make me think of schizophrenic and make me a bit skeptical, whatever. But what I know is like um, the Lord is trying to communicate with us. He wants to tell us things and, and we start to see things and, and feel things. And the closer you to God, I'm not going to talk to my friend uh, uh, Abraham about what I'm doing. Or to Amos, like we, we've seen, you know, Amos and he said, oh, Israel is little Lord, don't, don't damage, damage them or Judah, was, don't, don't destroy them. So you're going to be the intercessor or whatever for God. What can block you? I know you're really uh, saturated by now because we were uh, thinking in the spirit, you know, before uh, the beginning and we're asking about, um, uh, I see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. I want to see Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, and I don't know if you had, uh, you've seen Jesus or not. Well, it's up to, you know, your, but maybe something was, if you didn't, that is blocking. What are those blocking? Because that's important. Uh, I'm gonna scare you a little bit. Uh, if you remember the apostle Paul, he was blocked he, when he um, discriminated the church and whatever, um, and the light of God come upon him, it blinded him. He was blind for three days until Ananias came and prayed for him. See that picture? Can you see it guys? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm. Can you see it, Alison and uh, David? Yes, no? Uh, they are mute. All right, so what is this uh, scales? That was physical scales, and I'm nice. well, I'll show it to you again, uh, Alison. There was scales on his eyes. All right, scales, yeah. yeah. That's right, you couldn't see. Real scales, you know? Yeah, why yeah. scales? Yeah, so this is a good picture. I, I just want you to see. And Ananias came and lay hands. Um, so what are those uh, scales who can hinder you from seeing? Because this is really getting um, more specific. Um, sin? Uh, worldly attachment? Yes. Stronghold or ungodly belief? Let's stop yeah. into this. Because I don't think, you know... Um, motivation, attitude towards, you know, some of your uh, church people, whatever, or family or wife or husband, all those things. But let's go for the ungodly belief uh, because this is probably hinder most of the, the people of God to see. You've been, um, and I was just talking to him the other day, Alfie or Misha, I don't remember. 
one of you guys. And I start, yeah, it was this nation. And I start laughing, you know, because God showed me how everyone has to divorce his, without really be offended, your religion or your denomination. So who is Catholic has to renounce Catholicism, who is Pentecostal, renounce Pentecostalism, Protestantism, Islam and whatever, and be a kingdom uh, child. Because all of us are programmed in a certain program, you're born with this idea that they put in our head. And most of the time, those programs, as much as there is benefit of them to protect us in a certain way, they block us into other way. And we do not want, and we can really go da, 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 till the last breath to defend our faith, which is coming from our culture or from our um, uh, denomination. So if, if the Lord saying something to you and it's against what you learn from the Pentecostal church, then drop it. From your Catholic, drop it. The word of God is God. But those denominations and those ideas and teaching are the teaching of men. So, yeah. you know, we are a little bit afraid of doing experiences like this. That's from the Catholic Orthodox and whatever, and, and even Protestant. But into the Pentecostal, they are on the other way. They lack the experience and then they do it in the flesh, so it's no good. So you have to say, no, 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 no. I want only, if I say it out, that's all I say, because this is all I saw. You don't say, yeah, I see the rod and doing this. And, and the Lord say, very good. He saw only a rod and he saw only the tree, you know? This is all what he saw. It should be good enough. We don't have to be fake to try to impress others and impress ourselves because the first experience is so amazing when, when you receive the Holy Spirit and you want it again. So you try to, to, to push it to come. Don't push it to come, desire him. But most of us has really to leave a lot of things that they learn and they are very defending and very fanatic about it. And anyone come, you stop defending. I remember when I started working with OPSM, I shared that story before. Uh, I, I don't like remakes ever because all our uh, things are very expensive. And then the person just like a little bit like, it's a quarter of a drop, a step one step higher or lower, higher. It's not gonna harm you, you're gonna love it later on. And I, can, and I get this lady work with me in sales uh, and she said, Susie, why you take a, a, a defensive mood? Because I don't do wrong. Is this their pride? Maybe, but I learned from this woman that day. She said, don't worry, we're a rich company. We can afford to remake and whatever. And I took that from her. Don't take that defensive mood, don't. If there is a God, he will defend himself. Or otherwise he's not God. Don't take the defense on, on something that you have hundreds of reason why when it's not Bible. Let those skills fall from you because this is the only way that you can see God and his revelation. What you've been trained on, on whatever, he has to be removed. Then you start to see the things which are real and from God, even if it was a rod. And God will say, good, good, my child. It's all what I show you is a rod. I don't want you to say the rod and other rods because I didn't show you the other rods. Say, no, 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 I cannot see. You're going to continue to be follower, you know, last uh, few weeks or whatever God was putting in our heart to, to love the word of God because it's going to be taken from us. But now he wants us to step into a place where we can do things more with the investment of word, God's word in us. And then even with all that many people do not read the word of God. They do read the things they like or whatever. I don't know. No matter what you say, what is was prophetic said, and even I must get that prophecy, the word of God will not be found. But was no one really treasuring the word of God the way that the prophecy came and, and in the sense like it is big warning. You know, you're not gonna die from food, but you're gonna die if you don't have the word of God. Amen. Because he said, we do not live alone by the, the, the bread alone. Right. But by every word from the mouth of God, this can kill you if there is no word of God. And we didn't take it into seriousness. Some of us took it seriously. And they read the word of God more than ever in the total life. 
more others are relaxed into this. So now when we approach in a place that God is inviting us to go in a spirit realm, that's more dangerous because the spirit realm is not all Christian spirit. So you're not very solid into the word of God, into the meat, in what the things that can put boundaries and protect you from doing things on like the, the there's no difference between the witches or the fortune teller and, and these things and between the seer and the visionaries. Only the difference, this is the spirit of God. This is not the spirit of God. That's the only difference. So here is, if you're not fed enough, like we, uh, in the beginning of our lock, we said, read, 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 study, learn, lock yourself, go hit your head, da, 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 with one verse. If you study one verse, this is all what can uh, uh, keep you alive into the future. Get my verses, which can keep you strong and alive. Because there will come the famine of the word of God. And this is here where it can really uh, be struggling. So what happened here? And immediately there, the Ananias, immediately there fell from his eye as it had been scales. And he received sight. So when those scales fail, you will receive sight. You will see the things that you cannot see. Then others are talking to you about it and you really, really cannot see them. These scales have to fall and then you will receive sight. And see what happened. Four swings, whatever, and arose and was baptized. Instantly he desired baptism. You know, people don't, you know, the, the, the family who been baptized the other day, they, they're Christian, they're good people, they probably love the Lord and everything, I don't know them, but I mean, when they heard about the news of great, dedicate your life to God and say, I want you. They take the thing serious and a week or two after the teaching, they say, I jump in the water and I don't care what people will say about me, whatever. I want to say that my face is joined to the, to the children of God. So he took those things serious. See, these things are for us here. But listen, brother and sister. Before the conversion of the apostle Paul here, what happened? Jesus said to him, he appeared to him in the street, as you may know, the other didn't see him, but was only him who saw the light, uh, the eternal light with his human eyes. That's why his eye was blinded. And uh, may God put those, those scales to protect him. I don't know. And he was able to hear the other couldn't hear. And he said to him, I am Jesus, whose you persecute. You persecuted me. So people who are really um, uh, very religious, let me say it that way, you're very religious into your thinking, into your way of life, and, and very solid into your rituals and things. These are the people who are really need to be <coughs> kicked by the Lord. The Lord, you know, kicked him here. And it's like, it is hard for you to kick against the bricks or the woods. If you're familiar with that word, you cannot kick against me. You're going and killing and discriminating and you want to kill my children, the world that they have, the life that they have, physically killing them. You are attacking me. So when you are thinking that you are very religious, protecting the faith, uh, trying to be the best Catholic or Orthodox or Pentecostal or uh, Protestant and your ideas and your thoughts and your denomination, and what your, your people fed you with. And you're kicking against God because he's about to do something in your life that you are only one who opposing or you are the only one who want it. I just want to finish, but um, while this is Job was talking to God and he said, don't let your hand, you know, your, your dread fall upon me. When you see God, it's something very dreadful, then uh, uh, very fearful. But God wanted to come to you. And when you see him first, you're going to have those ones. But please let him. You have to let the Lord to come to you. Uh, here is the word is saying, who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? And who shall stand into his holy place? Who will go there? You has a clean hand and pure heart. So thinking you're cleaning your um, hand all the time, wash, 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 clean, 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 clean. No, that's not what it said. He has to be the source of your cleansing. 
So who want to, it's the Holy Spirit who's gonna wash you. You think that things that you do or you don't do, you know, you're washing for you. But it's about the Holy Spirit, let him doing things into your life. He's speaking about um, who has a clean hand and pure heart. You think you have a pure heart? No. Uh, the word of God say, create in me pure heart, O Lord. So you come to him and say, listen, Lord, I try to make my heart pure. But I'm still get jealous. I'm still get angry. I'm still get threatened from my brother and sister instead of thanking God for the, the gift that you invest in them to get to me. You know, like all those things, you need to come to the Lord for a pure heart and for clean, clean. And then he said, who does not lift up his soul to what is false and does not swear deceitfully? For I will pour upon uh, water upon him that is thirsty. That's uh, the key thing. Floods upon the dry ground. And I will pour my spirit upon your seeds and my blessing upon your offspring, your children. You get thirsty. You get thirsty. That's the one who's gonna ascend to the hill of the Lord. We are about to be raptured. Amen. We are about to go to the ascent to the hill of the Lord. Hallelujah. And to stand into the holy place. Are you clean hands? Are you having a really clean heart? Well, if you have, good for you. If you don't, you're not sure, just tell him. Create in me a pure heart. I try to make my heart pure, but I can't stop this jealousy or that anger or that uh, yes, Lord. Yes, talking Lord. about others. Or I don't know what you do. Yes, Lord. Do. Yes, Lord. But just come to him with all what you yes, have Lord. because we are about to be raptured, guys. And Lord, yes, you Lord. wanted to have the real purity. Clean, of clean, the Holy clean my heart. You clean want my heart. To pour on you something. Clean my heart. Clean my heart, oh Lord. I just want to tell you here that um, he said, who can, uh, the word is here, who have ascended the hill of the Lord. You try ascending. See that guy is going in a green way and he go in a, in a good ladder. And he's trying to go up ascending to the, to, the, uh, to the hill of the Lord, but he will be able to do it. Maybe, maybe not. Here, the children of Israel were all offered to come to the hill of the Lord. And they were scared. See that the picture is just they were running away. This is too much scary thing. But guys, God is preparing us. You know, yes. if you, if the things of the Lord see this picture, they were so scared of the presence of God and they ran away. But here is that guy who's called Moses. If those things of God is attracting you, it's the same bush, you know, it's the same God who show on the mountain was the same God who show into the bush, into the, the burning bush. And it attracts him and he bowed before him and he accepts, you know, not accept willingly, but unwillingly. He was forced to accept the, the, the things that God wants him to do, you know. He wants him to go and deliver the children of Israel from Egypt. But see here the mountain, but then later on he was face to face with this. And uh, righteousness. Uh, Look at the mountain of the Lord. He was face to face with this guy. Don't you think he was able to go to that mountain and be face to face with the mighty God for 40 days before he come here and, you know, into that a burning bush and be skeptical and be running and be, no, 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 find someone else. I'm too old. I'm too young. I'm too busy. But this is not for me, you know what? There is other people who love this life. He was into that stage and every one of the children of God from Isaiah to Ezekiel to Moses to everyone was offered, you know, this thing said, no, 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 not me, go find someone else. But brother and sister, this is where we are gonna go. Do you know where we are going? Soon and very soon, we are gonna go to that place. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord and shall stand in his holy place? Very soon we're going to go to this. So every one of us today uh, desire the Lord. That's desire, that's thirst in your heart. Mm. I don't want to be into that dry land anymore. I don't want to oh. be uh, in the old style, the revelation that yes. I have. Hallelujah. I don't want to be bored from what's happening around you. I just want it to be an opportunity for me to get more of you. 
to be translated, to be like you, to be miracle signs and wonders, even when I'm sleeping. I just want to give you every bit of my soul and my spirit. Thank you, Father, Jesus. use me. Use yes, me in Lord. such hour. Use me in use such me. hour. Me. I'm me. ready, Lord. Use I'm me. ready. I want to ascend to the hill Thank of you, God. Jesus. I want to ascend to the hill of God. Use and I'm not ready. You're Thank waiting you, because I am Move not ready. Move I thought the others are not ready. Move but probably spirit, me. Move I'm not spirit. yet there, Lord. So make me Move ready. Move me in the spirit, Lord. Move me in the spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank and you. as we close our uh, teaching today, I pray that the word is not too heavy and no one is offended from me. Uh, but if um, if you are offended, check with the Lord and the, the Bible is busy on hand. <laughs> All of them eat from the same spiritual food. But uh, before finishing this, guys, I just want to offer, um, if you are listening to my video and uh, you never received the Lord Jesus. So today I want you to ask Jesus in your heart. Uh, I'm sorry that I never did that before in my videos because I usually preach to people, but as the word of God is going outside and many others are listening to it, it's so simple. I want you, Jesus, forgive me for my sins, forgive me for ignoring you, come in my heart, you died for me on the cross, you took all this from me, die, you, you raised from the dead, come in my heart, Lord Jesus, come in the Holy Spirit, baptize me with the Holy Spirit. Let me extend my, my religious is so rigid. My life is so locked into the same thing. I want to be more open and be see only the rod and then you're going to go with me into deeper and better place. And forgive me for being like really uh, pushing you or ignoring you all those days. So it's so simple. Come Jesus in my heart. That's Amen. My heart. Amen. That's the word that the, the, the guy who was on the next to Jesus on the cross he said that, remember me when you come to your kingdom, he said today. So today the Lord wants you to be with him. Amen. Brother and sister, give your life to the Lord. And he Hallelujah. Will do miraculous things. I pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor Susie, for the powerful message. Thank you, Pastor. Thank Sam. you for the encouraging. It was a blessing message. And um, yes, and I believe that 